right, in this problem we're told there's a 125 kilogram astronaut, uh, including the spacesuit, and this uh, person acquires a speed of 2.5 meters per second by pushing off with her legs from a 1900 kilogram space capsule. Uh, question A, what is the change in the speed of the space capsule? B, if the push lasts for 0 0.600 seconds, what is the average force exerted by each on the other? Um, and as the reference frame, use the position of the capsule before the push. Uh, part C, what is the kinetic energy of each after the push? Let's make sure that we can picture what's going on here with my famous drawing skills. This is supposed to be the spaceship with a mass of 1900 kilograms. We're going to go ahead and just call that M1. The uh, astronaut will be over here with a uh, mass M2, and that's 125 kilograms. This is the picture before everyone is at rest. And then with her legs, which I suppose we should have extended, so let's make it look like this. She's about to kick off. She kicks off, and she goes flying this way. The spaceship presumably goes in that direction. So here's the spaceship later, now moving like this. We'll call this V1 prime and the astronaut hopefully she's got a rocket pack or something so she can get back otherwise this was a very bad idea okay m2 m1 and she is now moving at this velocity v2 prime okay uh, let's go ahead and indicate what we have here we have the masses we have uh, that she acquired a speed of 2.5 meters per second 2.50 meters per second uh, we might want to note over here that both V1 and V2 are both originally zero. Okay, so um, in part A, what is the change in speed of the space capsule? In other words, what is the speed of the space capsule afterwards? Okay, before, after. Now, if we try to think about this problem in terms of forces and the amount of time acting, that may be a little bit difficult. So. The thing to always try when you're dealing with anything with a collision or an explosion, which this would be, we would call this generically an explosion where things start at rest and they start moving in different directions. The concept to use here is collision or explosions. An explosion uses conservation of momentum. That's going to be the, the key thing to, to realize. So therefore, the equations that we need, just the definition for momentum, just for starters, mv, it's a vector. And conservation of momentum, which tells you the initial momentum, the total, is equal to the total final momentum. So total initial equal to total final. All right. So let's go ahead and try to use this to do part A to figure out what is V1 prime initially. We can write P1 plus P2, but look, we both we know that they're both zero, and so the initial momentum is zero. That means that this has to be equal to the total final momentum. And so what does that look like? We have one object, the person, uh, with a mass m2 and v2 uh, prime for the speed. So let's just write m2 v2 prime and the mass of the space capsule and the velocity that it's moving, m1 v1 prime. We, I'm, I realize I'm doing this all in algebra. This is all equal to zero. So let's solve for v1 prime. Apparently. We put it all together that we have minus m2 uh, v2 prime divided by m1. That should give us v1 prime. We plug in the numbers and we find that um, v1 prime gives us minus approximately 0 0.16 meters per second. So we should stop and do a little sanity check here. Does this make sense? First of all, it's negative. Should that be? Well, if we've defined velocities to be positive in that direction, then anything going that way should have a negative velocity. So that's consistent. It's moving much slower than the person, which is moving you know, more than 10 times faster. Is that what we expect? Based on our own experience, I would say so. The object, the spaceship, is much more massive. So it should have much smaller speed. OK, that seems, that seems legitimate. Part B. <clears throat> um, if the push lasts for 0 0.6 seconds, what is the average force exerted by each on the other? So I think one thing that we probably should have listed here conceptually to do problem B is we should think about um, impulse 
uh, and also force and what the relationship is between impulse momentum and force so for that let's remind ourselves that the change in momentum of any object you can relate that to the average force act, act, acting on that object times the amount of time that the force has acted for since we can figure out the change in momentum for either of these objects we know the amount of time that's given to us in the problem we can therefore figure out the average force on that object so let's go ahead and do that so for the astronaut we know the change in momentum remember the change in momentum this delta symbol means the final quantity minus the initial quantity um, in the end the astronaut is moving uh, and has a momentum given by the mass times the speed that turns out to be 312.5 kilograms times meters per second minus the initial velocity which is zero okay therefore uh, the average force acting on the astronaut we'll put an a here is given by delta p divided by delta t in other words 312.5 kilogram times meters per second divided by the time 0 0.6 seconds and this turns out to be approximately 512 uh, let's think real quick what are the units it's kilograms times meters divided by seconds divided by seconds in other words divided by seconds squared that's a newton that's supposed to be the unit for force so we're in good shape okay this is a newton okay 512 now let's just check what is it on the spaceship You probably already have a prediction, but if not, maybe think about it now, what you expect it to be, given that this is what the force is on the astronaut. The same procedure we should do, the change in momentum. In the end, the spaceship is moving with this velocity of approximately minus 0.6. In fact, if you go back and look at what the number was before we rounded it, what you would notice is the final momentum, given the fact that it's got a negative velocity, is approximately minus 312.5 kilograms times meters per second so let me keep these separated therefore the average force on the spaceship is minus 312.5 kilogram times meters per second divided by the time you probably see this is going to turn out to be the same number minus 521 or so newtons the fact that these things are equal in magnitude but opposite in 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 direction is actually just a, a restatement of Newton's third law. So conservation of momentum and Newton's third law are, if you like, two sides of the same coin. So that just tells you that the force of object one on object two is equal and opposite to the force of object two on object one. Finally, in part C, which I'm going to go ahead and put right over here, we want to ask, uh, what is the kinetic energy of each after the push? And so, if you like, the kinetic energy the total kinetic energy or the kinetic energy of the astronaut would be one half times the mass of the astronaut that is m2 as we've labeled times v2 prime and square it this turns out to be when you plug in all the numbers approximately 391 joules because we're dealing with energy the kinetic energy of the spaceship i'll put that as an s it's same formula one half mass of spaceship times v1 prime in case you have a guess that it should be equal to the kinetic energy of the astronaut you would be incorrect it turns out to be only 26 joules so although they end up with equal and opposite momenta they do not have equal magnitudes of kinetic energy